David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about statics, CE 2301. We're in chapter 9, talking about friction, as the book calls it, Coulomb friction, for the French guy in 1785 who kind of brought all these thoughts together. Friction is a force that resists relative sliding motion. It's what keeps things from sliding relative to each other. It's caused by surface roughness. The friction model is based on this uh, general, these general concepts. We have a force that increases with time, PT. We have the weight of a block, that's how it's represented a lot of times, acting through the center of gravity of the block. And then we have a coefficient, we have two coefficients of friction between the block, whatever it's made out of, and the surface that it's, the force is trying to slide it on. We have mu sub s, the static coefficient of friction, and mu sub k, the kinetic coefficient of friction. We'll talk about that here, those two kind of things and how they relate here in a second. We're drawing a free body diagram over here in the green of that block with the force acting on it, the weight, and remember with the free body diagram we remove the supports and show the uh, uh, reactions and we have a normal force that's perpendicular to the surface it's sliding on, I'm drawing that with that little perpendicular sign, and we have the friction force um, that acts parallel to the surface it's trying to slide on. Real simple sum of forces in the y direction is reveals that the normal force in this orientation equals the weight w and the sum of forces in the y direction reveals that the, uh, the pushing force p sub t or as a function of time is equal to the friction force so, what I call this uh, friction force is the available friction force. It's the maximum friction force that's available to resist motion. Here's a little uh, chart that shows the friction force on the left vertical axis, the pushing force, P sub T, here on the horizontal axis, and we see that as you push on the block, the friction force rises um, increasingly to meet the uh, pushing force. The friction force really doesn't even exist until you push on it and try to cause motion. Until you get to this point of slipping impending, which is meaning it begins to occur, um, the block is in equilibrium. Once you hit that point, motion occurs. So where it's about to occur, we said motion is slipping is impending, or motion is impending. The friction force at that point is F max, which is mu sub s times the normal force. Once motion starts, we have a lower coefficient of friction, mu sub k, times the normal force and that's this part of the line here. This is kind of an idealized line and it's not exactly what occurs but it's good enough for our close enough for government work. Here the force, the static friction force is less than mu sub s while the block's in equilibrium. Once it starts moving the force kinetic force friction force is equal to mu sub k times the normal force. The way they determine these uh, coefficients of friction is they actually use a sliding mechanism, a sloping mechanism like this where you can put the surface that you're trying to measure the coefficient of friction on the sliding surface and the, the block made out of whatever it's made out of and you gradually raise this handle until the block starts, sl starts sliding and at that point where motion is impending, 
Here's a free body diagram of it. We've got the, the weight acting through the center of gravity and the normal force acting perpendicular to the uh, sliding surface, the friction acting parallel to the sliding surface, and we have this angle theta s. So we do a little quick vector math and we see that the coefficient of friction mu sub s is equal to the tangent of that angle because by the vector math that's the friction maximum friction force, the available friction force divided by n. And so the mu sub s is just the tangent of that angle. Simple example is a block on a horizontal surface pushed on by 50 pound force at a 30 degree angle sort of downward from the horizontal. The weight of the block is 100 pounds. Coefficient of friction is 0.4. We do sum of forces in the y direction. We get n, the normal force acting up, minus 100, the weight acting down, minus the downward component of this 50 pounds force that we're pushing on it. So it's the opposite of the 30 degrees, so it's 50 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is sine of 30 is 0.5, so it's 25 pounds. Just do the math. The normal force is equal to 125 pounds. So I have a maximum friction force, or an available friction force, of mu times n. That's 0 0.4 times 125 pounds, 50 pounds. It's my maximum friction force available. Now if I do sum of forces in the x direction, I say I have the horizontal component of this 50 pound force that I'm pushing on it with times the cosine of 30 then, that's 0.866 minus, the only thing in the x direction is this friction force resisting the uh, motion. So the actual friction force just matches the pushing force, which is 43.3 pounds. Therefore, no motion occurs. Here's a sloping example to show another key point of these friction problems. It's example 9.2 from the book. I have a 20 degree sloping surface, coefficient of friction of 0.3. The weight of the block is 392 newtons. And I want to find out some things about this pushing force P, which is horizontal. I do a little free body diagram, which of course is the key to the highway. And I've got the key thing with a lot of these friction problems is to rotate your axes so that they are parallel and perpendicular to the sloping surface. That makes the math a lot easier to, to write out and these sum of forces equations a lot easier to visualize. So here's my rotated axes, 20 degrees from the horizontal and the vertical. And I call y prime the one that's up and to the left. This is x prime. The first part of this problem is I want to see how much force it takes to push that block up the hill to cause impending motion upward. Therefore, my friction force acts opposite to the direction of the motion, which is, is downward, down and to the left. My no normal force, of course, is perpendicular to the sliding surface. I first do a sum of forces in the rotated y prime direction. That's equal to n, my normal force, positive up, minus the uh, rotated axis the component of that in the y prime direction which is the adjacent part of this 20 degree angle times 392 so it's a cosine of 20 times 392 minus the uh, I have a little bit of an upward I have a little bit of a downward component relative to in the y direction of the sine of this 20 degree angle times my unknown force P I combine all my terms do the math and I get that N is equal to 368.4 plus 0.342P. I multiply that expression by my coefficient of friction, 0.3, and I get that my maximum available force, F max, is equal to 110.5 plus 0.0026P. Now I do a sum of forces in the x direction, equal to zero. I have the cosine part of this pushing force, P, 
so it's cosine of 20 times P minus the weight component downward down the slope in the X prime direction so it's the sine of 20 degrees times 392 minus my friction force it's going down the hill I can now substitute that value 110.5 plus 0.1026 P in that I just solved for in the sum of forces in the Y prime direction into this equation for F and I can do all the math multiply those by the cosines and the sines and substitute that in there for F and I get 0.8374 P is minus 244.6 is equal to zero so P is equal to this expression which is 292 newtons that's the force at which it's gonna if you push one little bit harder it's gonna start to push that block up the hill for motion to impend up now I want to see does it take a force how much force does it take to keep the block from sliding down the hill on its own and so here's a free body diagram of that it looks a lot like this except for because my motion is impending down or that's the situation I want to solve for my friction force force is now going up up the slope everything else is the same and everything is the same in the y prime direction is this equa this uh, um, equilibrium equation up here so I can everything is the same my normal force is up positive the weight is down and my pushing force is the same component so I still have the same maximum available friction force of 110.5 plus 0.1026 P now just one component changes in my sum of forces in the X prime direction that's where uh, I still have this pushing up component the weights component sliding down the hill but this time instead of minus F I have plus F because my F is now my friction force is now going up in the positive X prime direction so I have the similar looking equation over here except this time it's plus this expression for F max that I got from the sum of forces in the Y prime direction so it's plus 110.5 plus 0.1026 P combine all the terms I get that P is equal to 23.6 divided by 1.0426 which is equal to 22.6 newtons to keep motion from impending downward 